Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. A trial in federal court begins today. Also tonight, one lawmaker wants to know why court judges are recusing themselves. And the NMI's chief prosecutor supports drug court. In sports, tee up. We check out a golf event up in Cagnan. Stay with us. These stories and more are up next. Mickey D's McCrispy. Formerly known as the Crispy Chicken Sandwich, now has some respect on his name. Ba da ba ba ba. Real talk. The Spicy Crispy Chicken Sandwich should have been named Spicy McCrispy from Jump. Ba da ba ba ba. Half a day to the WAMI and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Monday, July 17, 2023. Trial began today in the U.S. District Court for a longtime guest worker advocate who is being accused of license fraud. Today, the jury heard opening arguments from both sides for defendant Bonifacio Sagana, who is pleading not guilty to conspiracy to unlawfully produce an identification document. U.S. Attorney Albert Flores said that the 58-year-old defendant helped a person with unlawful immigration status acquire a CNMI driver's license for the price of $200. Flores told jurors that they would also hear from a witness who is a mutual friend of Sagana and the woman he helped, who was approached by the defendant, asking her to relay the message not to say anything about the case to anyone. The defense, represented by Richard Miller, claims that Sagana has nothing to hide as he complied with Homeland Security agents raiding his home and answering questions without a lawyer present. According to Miller, the case is really about whether the U.S. government can prove or not that Sagana produced a CNMI driver's license that affects interstate commerce. Jurors today heard from the first witness, U.S. Homeland Special Agent David West, who said that Sagana gave them inconsistent statements regarding money. West said that Sagana signed a written statement in the Homeland Office that no one has ever paid money for helping them get a driver's license. Later that same day in a car ride back to the residence, Sagana told West and another agent that he was given donations from Filipinos who he's helped in the past. West also testified that they found four different I-94 forms in Sagana's home. The defense pointed out to the jury that the agents only had a search warrant for Sagana's home in Chalancanoa. But Sagana agreed to have his other home in Chelan Piao and four of his cars searched. He also asked Wes if it's allowable to have several copies of the I-94 forms in which Wes said no.
The jury trial will continue tomorrow. One lawmaker expresses concern on the pattern of recusals she's seen of Superior Court judges on cases involving the former governor. And she says that she wants to know why. Representative Marissa Flores is requesting CNMI judges and justices to disclose specific reasons for recusing themselves in the criminal and civil cases involving former Governor Ralph Torres. Flores, who heads the House Committee on Judiciary and Governmental Operations, wrote a letter to Chief Justice Alex Kostra today raising the, her concerns. She says the recusal of both judges and justices incurs substantial delay in the case and prevents the public from having cases heard by local elected leaders. Flores says while the Commonwealth Code has a process for issuing recusals from judges or justices, it does not require them to identify in detail the factual basis for the recusal. She says this creates a situation where there is no review of the decision and inconsistent disclosure of the reasons for recusal. Earlier this month, all five Superior Court judges issued orders of self-recusal from a lawsuit filed by Torres against the Department of Finance, which challenges the contract of Special Prosecutor James Kingman. According to the orders, Judge Teresa Kim Tenorio said there exists a conflict in her presiding over the case, while Judge Wesley Bogdan says he is Torres's formal legal counsel. As for Judge Joseph Camacho, his spouse, Viola Alipuzu, is one of the attorneys for Torres. Judges Robert Naraja and Kenneth Govendo did not go into details of their recusal. With all five judges recusing themselves, it may mean the appointment of a non cinemite judge to hear the matter. No order has been released yet as of press time, but in the past, that is what has happened. Back in December of 2021, after all five judges recused themselves from hearing the civil case of Torres versus the House Committee on JGO Operations, retired CNMI judge Timothy Bellis was appointed to take on the lawsuit. And then again in April of 2022, after another set of recusals in the criminal case filed by the Office of the Attorney General against Torres, the CNMI court selected Guam Judge Alberto Tolentino to preside over the case. Tolentino was also assigned to hear the civil case litigating Torres' refusal to honor a legislative subpoena. According to KSPN Archives, Tolentino then recused himself due to health matters. Guam Judge Arthur Barcenas was then appointed. Drug court is still fairly new to the NMI, but officials continue to enhance knowledge and skills in handling this issue. Chief Prosecutor Chester Hines has just returned from Houston, Texas, after attending the annual National Association of Drug Court Professionals. The three-day conference had at least seven to 8,000 participants. And the drug court here always goes to these conferences to get, to get training. It's important to get training so that we can keep up with the best practices, because right now the, the, the ability for people to get help from, from counselors and, and, and and in this community is limited, so, so we want to make sure that we're doing a good job. Hines says the CNMI Drug Court currently meets the national standards for ensuring evidence-based treatment and recovery, but that we can always do better. And as it is currently budget season in the NMI, this is his request. My request for the Drug Court is uh, keep investing, because uh, right now I think the Drug Court and, uh, and SAR, uh, Hope, the Hope Facility, CGC, they're the only game in town that, to, to, to provide uh, uh, drug counseling, alcohol counseling, anger management, all these different types of programs, invest in them because uh, that's what we need. The CNMI Drug Court was first established in 2016 and since then it's had an 85% success ratio and 86% of their graduates do not turn back to drugs. In May of this year, the drug court graduated six individuals. All right, coming up, a live night at the Garapan Fishing Base as musicians battle it out on the stage. 
Stay with us. This is next. One of the best addresses in Saipan has office space available now, right in the heart of things. The Marianas Business Plaza offers reasonable rates and can help build to suit your needs. You'll love the central location, just 15 minutes from the airport and 10 minutes from Garapan. Ample and covered parking keeps your vehicle close and protected. Two restaurants for easy access, lunch, dinner and business meetings. Building security and 24-hour access to your office backup generators so you can run your business in all weather and three elevators mean easy and convenient access it's the address in Saipan the Marianas Business Plaza get your goods here with care and attention with Micronesia Air Cargo Services Max is all about connections daily flights to and from Guam four times a week to Rota and bi-weekly flights to Tinian. We are connecting the Marianas. Perishable goods, Home Depot furniture and appliances, even live animals operating since 2013. Check out our Thursday special to Rota from Guam and Saipan. Call Max at 670-288-6227. If it fits, we'll take it. Opioids are commonly prescribed drugs. They can help ease short-term pain after surgery, an accident, or illness. Common brand names include Vicodin, Demerol, Oxycontin, and Percocet. Opioids can be very addictive, and they can actually change how your brain works. Opioid misuse can lead to death. If you are prescribed an opioid medication, talk to your doctor. Always take exactly as directed, never take higher doses, keep your medication secure, and safely dispose of unused or expired medication. It only takes a little to lose a lot. This project was supported by a grant from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation. Contents are solely the responsibility of CHCC and do not necessarily represent the official views of the CDC or the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Where can you watch baseball, golf, paddle, raft, hike, and see bears all in the same weekend? Our Chris Nelson brings us a story from Hokkaido, Japan. One of the top new tourist attractions in Hokkaido is Escon Field, home of the Ham Fighters. The team's name comes from its parent organization, Nippon Ham, a major Japanese food processing company. Founded in 1946, the fighters called Tokyo home for 58 years as co-tenants of the Tokyo Dome and Korakuen Stadium with the Central League's Yomiuri Giants. They then moved to Hokkaido and recently played in the Sapporo Dome before building their own address. Ham Fighters moved into the new stadium in March of this year. It's a rainy night, which means the roof stays closed. And even though the Ham Fighters aren't having a great year on the field, they are averaging an extra 6,000 fans per home game. The 35,000 seat stadium has natural grass and doesn't have a bad seat in the house and it's much more than a baseball stadium. The opponent tonight, the Oryx Buffaloes. This is the marriage of two teams, the Kintetsu Buffaloes that used to train right here in Saipan during the winter and the Oryx Blue Wave. Food is a big part of the Japan experience and there are a number of restaurants to try at the stadium and sake is also on tap. Japanese fans sing throughout the game. This is the opposing team section who frequently travel with the team. Their check-in luggage includes trumpets and drums. and flags. Seventh inning stretch in Japan, well, everyone sings along with YMCA.
these guys have their shirts off because they're kicking back in the Tower 11 Jacuzzi and Sauna area, which is located in left field. During the game, camera operators peruse the crowd for unsuspecting patrons and do funny things with them, like put baseballs on their heads. There's so much going on, it's sometimes hard to remember that there's a game happening. The Ham Fighters were once the team of the great Shohei Otani, now a member of the Anaheim Angels, and predicted to sign a new contract that could be worth well north of $500 million. That's about what it costs to build this stadium. On this night, the Blue Wave have the upper hand, and they take the win. Okay, so here's the takeaway for a summer getaway trip to Hokkaido from Saipan. Take the UA flight on Friday morning, Saipan to Narita with a quick connection up to the Chitose Airport. Head straight to the Ham Fighters game. Bring your swimsuit and watch the game from the tub. Day two, Saturday, head to the river. And go for a rafting excursion. Keep an eye out for fox and bears. Day three, Sunday, head to the Shakatan Peninsula. Go for a stand-up paddleboard ride and a snorkel and explore the clear blue water and the caves and then have a lunch of uni and scallops. Day four, Monday. This is the day to find your inner peace. It's flower day. Go to Ferrano, check out the fields of lavender and other flowers at the Tomita Farm and try some lavender ice cream. Day five, Tuesday morning, visit the Nika Distillery and study some whiskey history. Then go to Mickey Farms, pick some fruit and slide down the hill on one of the longer slides in Japan. Then hike up to Tenguyama and have a look at Otaru. Tuesday afternoon, fly from Chitose to Narita and catch the evening flight back to Saipan. Chris Nelson for the Channel 2 News. The celebration of Liberation Day in the NMI had more than one twist this year. To make it more proper, local musicians and artists competed to get their song as the official soundtrack for the year. Let's see who won. It was something new for the crowd to see at the 77th Liberation Day Carnival Grounds Saturday night as four bands jammed it out at the Battle of the Bands competition. Thank you to our bands for coming out, showing out, and really displaying their originality. I think that's what it's about for tonight. Specifically for tonight, it's all about our local artists, our local entertainers, and we are so excited to put them on the stage so that everybody gets a chance to be their own judge and you know pick their own favorite act tonight. The Sugar King Band won both the Grand Prize and the People's Choice Awards with an original song named Resiliency Rising. The judges were local artist JJ Conception, radio personality Big Mama, and local businessman Perry Inish Jr. So they're being judged on five different things. It's their lyrics, their melody, their stage presence, their um, their responsiveness, how well they cater to tonight's um, theme, which is Resiliency Rising. And as long as they score high within those elements, they'll be tonight's crowd champion. All right, folks, don't go anywhere. Sports is up next.
Need a new phone? Trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific, better together. Premium office space available now at the Hermosa Vista Business Park on Capitol Hill. Upgrade your work-life balance and enjoy a distinctive blend of location and nature with open spaces and ocean views. It's the perfect place for creative professionals who want real results. Call us at 670-483-4750 or email hvsaipan at gmail.com. Hey, golfers, come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass, and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time, and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online. Open seven days a week. Buena sports fans. the woods tiger and avoid the scenic route and keep it straight that's pretty go good advice in golf let's check in some swings at the hotel association golf tourney our chris nelson reports the hanmi golf tournament happened on saturday morning at lao lao bay golf course in kagman conditions were just about perfect on the west course golf course approaching its 30th birthday Volunteers had bright yellow shirts on this year. Part of the proceeds going to MTech, Marianas Tourism Education Council, and Vicki Benevente is thankful for that. We're going to help the Miley Clubs continue their education and, and outreach with the kids in the school. So they're going to keep reminding them, you know, tourism is everybody's business. Yellow tickets were on sale early. Selling work tickets, so race work funds for our handmade 500 sales and one of the greatest baseball players of all time, Tony Benevente, had his lucky red hat on. How are you feeling about the golf game today? Oh, you know, it's it's all luck. You never know. I mean, some days are good, some days are bad, but it's all for fun. It's all for a good cause, and it's all let's all enjoy ourselves. If you had one day and you could play baseball or golf, which would you go for? Ah, uh, one day. With the age right now, I play golf. <laughs> How are you feeling about the game today? Oh, good, good. Every time you leave home to play golf, it's great. <laughs> Conditions look good out there. <laughs> yes. Conditions good luck, guys. Beautiful. Thank you. Want to see the effect I have on women? How are you feeling today? <laughs> well, that didn't go very well. Was it what I said or the way I said it? How are you feeling today? <laughs> Send me a DM. Oh, wait. I don't have Instagram. Yet. Okay, let's stick to the fellows. What's the predictions today? Just hit the hole in one and seven nine eight eight one. <laughs> hole in which which is hole in one are you guys shooting? Are you aiming for what's the what's the best one? The truck. Uh, it's a truck. I don't know which hole is that, but. Oh country. Okay, here we go. So, what about you, buddy? Uh, Got the lucky Boise State shirt on. Oh yeah, you can't, go, you can't never go wrong with Boise State. <laughs> Meanwhile, the smart players aren't talking. They're over here practicing their putting in the pregame warm-up. 
shotgun start. Diego Benevente starts off on hole number eight. Now, Diego likes fishing just about as much as he likes golfing, and a day when he can put those two things together, well, that's a good day. I love going out, like, head out uh, by 5 and be at Coke Reef just when the light comes out. So we're back in by 10, 11 because of the golf in the afternoon. So, yeah, it's been done. <laughs> Hole number 8, you want to stay left of the water and right of the trees that are on the left. These fellas all hit it out there pretty good. Tough act to follow. Lots of volunteers on the course. We asked these girls if there were any early morning drinkers, but these girls are sworn to secrecy. You don't have names? Come on. <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> no names. No names. Vehicles up for grabs. Joe 10 Motors brought out this fancy orange car. You get a hole in one and you get to drive it home. The lefty, Jim Aronofsky, but he's going to be a little left. Bart Jackson asks about the gas mileage and airbags, but he's not going to take it. Hole number three, another vehicle, red truck, up for grabs. What kind of truck is it? It's the Homo, sir. All right. Free runner. Looks pretty nice. Tim Goodwin, now he's got a good closest to the pin game. Let's watch the swing here, but be quiet. Tim, you're kind of a forerunner guy anyway, right? I am a forerunner guy. That yeah, was a forerunner. I'll leave that one for you, Chris. Knock it in. All right, time to do some investigative reporting. Any close ones so far? Uh, yeah, actually. Um, Freddie Flores, he has uh, 31.5 inches. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so far just like three people recorded. Okay. Yeah. Are you the manager here? No, uh, no, just volunteer. What about, what about you? Sitting oh, yeah. down on the job. <laughs> Everything yeah. okay? Yeah, I'm just a little bit tired. <laughs> Been here the whole day. Banquet time. That's the time to find out who takes home the prizes. But first, we have to do some raffles. Man, there was a lot of raffles. Scoring format is unique. Blackjack double Peoria. That means just about anybody can win. Third place and $500 goes to... Ben Second place, $500 goes to Joseph Sablon. <laughs> and the winner, cash and a room at Crown Plaza. Golf tournament proceeds this year go to the Marianas Tourism Education Council and the 500 Sales Organization, teeing it up for a good cause, and thanks to all the volunteers that made it a great event. Chris Nelson for the Channel 2 News. Hi, I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Ghost Gym, and today we're going to go over the kettlebell deadlift. Fantastic exercise to build overall strength, particularly in the legs and hips. Remember, we want to make sure that our setup is in good position. If, you're, if, you, if you set up in a bad position, it's not going to look good and it's certainly not going to feel good. So a common setup, error setup is a, obviously a rounded upper back. Two simple ways of correcting that. All I'm gonna have Vince do here is extend his arms up here, and all he's gonna do is think about reaching long and pushing his hips back. 
reach long and push your hips back. So as you can see, he's already in good position. Now he, all he's gonna do is grab that kettlebell. He's got tension in his legs and in his back. All he's gonna do is just stand up tall, finish with his glutes. Premium office space available now at the Hermosa Vista Business Park on Capitol Hill. Upgrade your work-life balance and enjoy a distinctive blend of location and nature with open spaces and ocean views. It's the perfect place for creative professionals who want real results. Call us at 670-483-4750 or email hvsaipan at gmail.com. For your KSPN weather report, tonight partly cloudy with isolated showers, east winds 10 to 15 miles per hour, lows around 79, your chance of showers is at 20%. For tomorrow, partly cloudy with isolated showers, southeast winds 10 to 15 miles per hour, highs around 87, and your chance of showers is at 20% once again. Your marine forecast, general trade winds through Tuesday will become gentle to moderate through Friday, the remainder of the forecast. Period. Combined seas of 4 to 5 feet today will decrease to around 3 to 4 feet by Tuesday, then increasing 2 to 3 feet thereafter as a more substantial southwest swell from a tropical disturbance in western Micronesia arrives around midweek and the trades will increase this late into the next weekend. High tide will be at 6.31 a.m., low tide at 2.31 p.m., sunrise will be at 5.55 a.m., and the sunset 6.51 p.m. And there you have it, folks. That is your Monday edition of the new sports and weather here in the Marianas. Thank you so much for watching the Channel 2 News. We hope you have a great night and we'll see you back here on Wednesday.